Welcome to the video demonstration on the Interview tab. So to start, there is a Title field, Description field, Jurisdiction, Author, Version, and History. These are simply metadata fields or informational fields, things that you can use to describe your interview so that the next person who edits your interview or others that are using your interview as an example uh, can know a, a little bit more about the uh, structure of your interview or details of your interview. So let, let's just type in a few things here um, to demonstrate how these fields might be used. For instance, the title is just a reference to the type of what, what the interview is addressing. If it's regarding a particular form, you might want to use that form name. Uh, so let's we'll just type in an example here. Name change. You can try to include as much detail uh, as possible. You may have more than one uh, interview for name change, one for minors, one for adults. So you know, just add that additional detail there. Um, perhaps if this is a draft or, and not a final version, you might want to indicate that in the title, just as an example. Here in the description, you might want to just play out that title to a little bit more uh, detail. For instance, um, this is the adult version of the name change form or name change uh, interview and, and perhaps you want to identify uh, what form this corresponds with with um, you know the particular hot docs form or hot docs template and uh, perhaps you want to identify the actual uh, form number if there's a court form number you can add that in there as well. Again, just for informational purposes. As you may have um, a state that does not have unified forms, uh, certainly it's important to identify whether or not the particular interview addresses just a uh, single jurisdiction or if it applies to one more, more than one jurisdiction, you want to indicate that as well. So you can indicate that there. Your name, in case somebody wants to uh, hunt you down to see <laughs> what you were thinking when you were drafting this interview. Uh, no, really, it's just for, for informational purposes within your organization, um, especially helpful if you have more than one person working on the interview. Version, you could use the date here. IDJ Author will put a default date whenever you open this uh, a new file, a new interview. It'll put the, that day's date in the version. Uh, but you may choose to use some other indication for version, such as uh, version number 3, 4, etc., 3.5, however you like to do it. And then finally, you can add additional uh, detail as far as the progress of your interview, um, maybe showing who it was authored by, and then also showing who was involved in subsequent edits. For instance, you could do something like this, expressing when those edits were made, 2-15-2008, and that was for made into version 2. Uh, perhaps you want to indicate that peer review is needed. Again, just a place for you to keep track of where you're at so that if you're not able to work in the interview uh, every day uh, on a daily basis, then it's helpful to kind of remind yourself um, for later where you left off in your editing. So that can be done in the history section here. So what we've just discussed uh, are all fields that are simply for informational purposes only and have no effect on the interview. The other three fields on the interview tab do affect the interview. We have an end, gra end graphic selection. I'm going to leave that for last. That's a fun one. We'll talk about the other two that also existed in 1.5 first, and that's the language selection and the avatar selection. The language selection currently allows you to choose between English and Spanish. Now, to demonstrate what this does, we're going to preview a screen uh, in the interview. So we're going to leave it as English. We'll click on Preview. And as we do, you'll notice up at the top of the screen here that we have a Back button, a Next button, My Progress, Send Feedback, and Save and Exit. Those were all in English. If we go back by selecting our Resume Edit, and we switch this to Spanish or Espanol, and click preview again, you'll notice that those particular static buttons, those constants that are at the uh, on the menu bar, have changed to Spanish, anterior, etc. We'll click resume edit. 
So in other words, this button does not magically translate uh, your interview into Spanish. It's not a translator, but it does facilitate that process. So if you do have someone that can translate an interview into Spanish, then you can complement that uh, by having the menu bar in Spanish as well. The second selection uh, is the ability to change an avatar's color from blank to tan. So again, let's using the preview button on the left will demonstrate how that affects the interview. We'll leave it as blank and click preview. You'll notice that the avatar here is this white color. And I'm just going to continue here so we can also demonstrate how the end user's avatar has uh, retains a particular color as well. So you'll notice that this um, that both avatars are in uh, this white or blank color. If we click on resume edit and go back and change it to tan and click on preview, you'll notice now that they're both in a tan color. So again, those are, that's just an optional, that's just a preference selection there in the interview tab. Now the last option is the end graphic selection. If we click on preview, you'll notice that the graphic way at the end here, at the end of the road, is a courthouse. We have now uh, updated the software such that any author can change the graphic to something of their own choosing or design. So if we click back on Resume Edit and go back to our Interview tab, you'll notice that there's a yellow folder. That yellow folder can be used to browse and search for uh, the particular graphic that you want. Now, if you want to retain the courthouse graphic, you simply select the courthouse ending graphic from your program files folder, wherever it is that you saved uh, 2.0, typically under program files slash Cali, C-A-L-I. Now, if you'd like to use some other graphic, you can do so. Uh, there are some parameters that you do have to follow. Here they are. The graphic must be 900 by 250 pixels it must have alpha transparency and it must be a .png or .swf file. Uh, the pixels again must be 900 by 250, must have alpha transparency and it must be a .png or .swf file. And uh, these are very important to make sure that the graphic does not blow up and kind of cover part of the roadway. So it's, it's really important that you stick to those parameters. Uh, but to the extent you do, you could redesign, uh, you could design a graphic. And we have an example here that we did for Legal Aid of Western Ohio. I'll double click on that particular file and let's preview it. And you'll notice that we have a road sign with their logo there in the back background. So uh, it doesn't have to be a road sign. You can design whatever you please, just so long as you follow those particular parameters that I listed earlier. That's it for the interview tab. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to log on to www.a2jauthor.org.